This is Twit. This episode of Tech Break is brought to you by ACI Learning. While organizations continue to seek out cybersecurity talent, the cyber skills gap grows bigger every day. The average salary for cybersecurity specialists in the United States is $116,000. Through IT Pro's binge-worthy programs, ACI Learning can help elevate anyone choosing to start their IT career. Visit go.acilearning.com slash twit to get started today. <clears throat> Yesterday, I did something kind of fun. Actually, I did it on uh, Saturday. Uh, I put Windows on my MacBook. Ooh, how exciting. <laughs> it's, it's now official. Uh, you can use Windows on ARM <clears throat> in parallels, at least right now. Although I imagine uh, Fusion will, VMware Fusion will catch up quick. But uh, Parallels right now is, and Microsoft has officially acknowledged it, uh, is an authorized solution for Windows on ARM <clears throat> on an M1 or M2 Macintosh. And I'm here to tell you, it runs pretty sweet. It's pretty nice. I've run Windows on ARM in the past, and, uh, you know, for a long time it was in beta. In fact, it's just now, I guess, official. Uh, and it really wasn't very a very good experience because so many even of the Microsoft programs didn't run. Uh, that has changed mm -hmm. a lot. There are a lot. There are a number of Windows uh, machines that are running ARM, and Microsoft's put more attention into it, and it works pretty well. I'm happy to say. So the so the the exceptions don't really uh, don't really affect your your day to day operation because I was reading I was reading through it and I know that the the, the transition to ARM is still like. Ongoing, yeah, it's not and done. It's not That's like for it, sure. Yeah. yeah, so so is is the compatibility list pretty good? Like, if you the the reason why you the reason why you decided to install uh, Windows on a, on a, on an M1 or M2 uh, MacBook must be because you needed to get certain solutions, certain apps that you couldn't get on the Mac. Have they made sure that you can get those apps running on uh, on on ARM for Windows? You know, I didn't look at a compatibility list. I probably should. Everything I try, but I'm using generic stuff like Microsoft sure. Office. Uh, that all right. works. All the Microsoft apps work. Edge works quite well. Um, I'm sure Chrome works uh, quite well. But yeah, you should obviously check to see if that one thing you want uh, runs. What's nice is it runs pretty snappily. It does not feel like it's uh, slow. It's not virtualized. It's uh, it's something a little a little smarter. Um, well, it and, seems like, I mean, uh, this mm -hmm. is probably, the, you know, the, the sort of growing pains of Windows on ARM is probably one of the reasons why we haven't seen a replacement for boot camp. I don't know if we ever will. I think, I think, yeah, we may not. I, Apple may not have it. It may not be in their interest or they may just not have enough of a audience for it. I mean, if most people can get what they need done via parallels, I mean, the biggest the biggest problem with things like parallels and fusion has always been running games if you want to run games on the mm -hmm. Mac. And uh, that's never been a great solution for that in the first <laughs> place. And Apple would very much like you to believe that they care a lot about gaming and that you can just run those games natively on your Mac as soon as the game developers get around to actually making them. Yeah, and if you want to run a game in this, don't, because it doesn't support DirectX 12 or OpenGL. Yeah. Uh, so games are right out. But what I think it's primarily for, and one of the things Parallels does very nicely, is something called coherence mode. Which is if you had that one Windows app, you just you just have to run. Uh, you can mm -hmm. run it in coherence mode, where it's just a window next to your Mac yeah. Windows, uh, and it's just running, and uh, that's not too bad. I had to unfortunately I had to buy a co a license to Windows, to <laughs> <laughs> which at two hundred bucks hurts my heart. But I you know I had to <laughs> I had to see if it would run and how well it run. I'll keep it on my uh, I ran it on an M2 MacBook Pro with twenty four gigs of RAM. It it uh, took six gigs. Uh, mm -hmm. that was the automatic setting for Windows, and it runs fine in six gigs. So, uh, yeah, so it's just, not something you necessarily want to run on your eight gig. It's yeah, I wouldn't. <laughs> it's I mean, this is one argument. If yeah. you're going to run Windows, this would be one argument to get more RAM in your uh, Mac or any virtual environment. It'd be you know that's yeah. that's a good reason to get more RAM because. But it runs pretty. It, I was surprised how snappy it was. I was able to play solitaire just you know like that. It was great. It was, <laughs> no, no problem. Free cell. Yeah, let's not let's not lose our minds with free cell. But solitaire. I think that most most of the Windows apps I have either wouldn't work at all because they're really yeah, heavy, or exactly. but a lot of them are glue. They're little things that we're using, and we have to have like oftentimes like a little B link or or some yeah. kind of Nook or something that's running it. And I think those kinds of things will be great. You know, just to be able to have it on the Mac and have it running running on those things. And you know the. 
again, educational price four ninety nine, regular price five ninety nine, entry level. If if you're going to turn it into something, isn't that bad? If you're just going to use it as a PC, like if you, even if you're just going to flip it over, um, and if you're going to run both of those things at sixteen gigs, it's probably for for smaller apps, it could work really well. Ibu Cell had a good uh, suggestion in the chat room. He said if we turn the lights down twenty percent. We'd be able to recoup that hundred ninety nine dollars that I paid for Windows. So if you can, John Ashley, just <laughs> turn the thermostat down, turn the, turn the lights down a little bit. We got to make that money back somehow. Put on a Montevani record, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> little mood music. Windows subsystem for Andrews Android does not work. Windows subsystem for Linux does not work. The sandbox does not work, and virtualization based security does not work. DirectX twelve is not supported. Thirty two bit ARM apps are not supported. Yep. <laughs> so <laughs> so the list is probably pretty long of things that won't work. And I bet you most of the uh, pro apps that you use, Alex, would definitely not work. But none of them will work. Yeah. <laughs> but but the um, but 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 the but again we have a lot of little things that we use as glue to, as little controllers. And right now we're we're using very, you know, inexpensive little PCs that aren't that much less than just having a Mac Mini. Um, and to be honest with you, I'd rather have a Mac Mini that I knew I could repurpose later at some point. Um, even if it was a hundred dollars more expensive, yeah. most of the people that I know that most of the people I know that are running boot camp or running Windows on Mac hardware are administrators. People who they want they they just prefer the Mac hardware to do all their work on. Uh, and even even if they're almost solely administrating uh, Windows and Linux workstations. And so a lot of the tools they need to maintain that network and to serve their users really is Windows only. And they have to speak the language of the people that they're serving. So it's not necessarily, it's not necessarily, I mean, I think for most people, if you, if you already spent $1,500 on a Mac laptop, probably the app that you want is that there's either a direct analog or the direct app available on the Mac. This it's it's not 1989 anymore. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. another good reason not to bring back boot camp. Yeah, yeah. Damn. I was thinking like you know it, it's very. I mean, this is sort of a uh, like a deja vu and almost. I mean, when I started writing about Apple in the first place professionally, it was during the Intel transition and when you could first run Windows on your Mac, right? Because of the uh, the processors and. I think the the environment's changed a lot since then. In those days, it was like, oh, see, now you can run, you can get real stuff done, you can run all these things that you know you otherwise couldn't run. And nowadays, like Andy said, there's either an analog or the the things available. If not on the Mac, then on iOS. Oftentimes, like there are iOS clients, a lot of guys cases of things that don't you know even exist on the Mac or web services. Right, so much stuff has moved to things like web services or cross platform services that it's not as critical. It's nice for taking care of those little like last little like little linking pieces of software or whatever but it's not i, th I think in in general it's more of a niche product than it was maybe 15 years ago microsoft does get credit in its <clears throat> press release for including the the registered uh, logo and the tm logo four times in one headline <laughs> it's very impressive they clearly didn't want <laughs> apple to get upset in any way about the use of the word mac apple m1 or m2 why is m1 a, a R and an M2 a TM. That's kind of interesting. I'm sure there's a legal. Maybe they didn't finish getting it registered yet. I don't yeah, know. isn't that weird? Or maybe that seems unlike them. You get the R once it's registered, and the TM just means yeah. we're a. Yeah, that's probably what it is. It hasn't yet been approved. Yeah. This has been around. I mean, I I, I put uh, parallels on uh, an early M1 and ran the beta version of Windows on ARM. So people were saying, "Well, wait a minute, this isn't anything new. That's been around forever. It's now official. That's the difference." Microsoft, it's no longer a beta version of Windows on ARM. I asked Daniel Rubino, who was the editor in chief of Windows Central yesterday or uh, Sunday, why it took so long, because there was some uh, speculation that Microsoft had some sort of exclusive deal with uh, Qualcomm, because of course all the what Windows on ARM computers are Qualcomm based processors, uh, and he said it's really not that; it's that it's the drivers. The drivers are all Qualcomm, yeah. and they had to get mm -hmm. drivers for. Apple Silicon, and apparently that was non-trivial. <clears throat> yeah. so. But there's, you know, there's even still a very, very vibrant Hackintosh community. So if they can, if they can figure out how to get Wi-Fi and Bluetooth going uh, on, a, on an old Dell, I think that this is within the realm of Microsoft and Parallels. They did it just in time for the cheapskates who have paid for TurboTax on the PC. <laughs> they want to put it on their Windows <laughs> machine just in the nick of time for tax day uh, 2023. Anyway, I, yeah, I mean, it. I should have. I wasn't thinking. I should have brought my uh, laptop in and showed you. I show. I, I showed a little demo on uh, Ask the Tech Guys on on Sunday, so you can 
see that on Sunday. But uh, yeah, it works, I guess, is the point. And it'll work for those of you who, you know, it's not like I need, I'm a realtor and I need the MLS app you know, to mm -hmm. run a my M2 or something <laughs> yeah. like that. It's that kind of uh, line of business. It's a, it's always fascinating, especially like when you look at uh, the market for certain vintage computers, like there's an old, when the classic uh, first, uh, first laptops, so the Epson H20, something like that. Uh, you, you see all kinds of laptops are just like it. They're going for uh, 20 bucks, 30 bucks, oh, 40 bucks. Just get rid of it for me. But these model, these specific models of Epsons are going for easy 200 to 300 dollars when you can find them there's it's easily what the money can spend for it and the reason why is because these devices are used as hardware controllers for like really really old pump stations and really really <laughs> old alarm stations and so you can you can either totally you can either totally like rip out your entire pump controller station or you can basically find a new version find a new working version of this laptop when this old 1983 1984 laptop dies lamborghinis are the same way the software to tune it and control it is basically runs on a version of I, th I think it's like actually locked hardware lock for security purposes to this one model of laptop and that's why again like if, if you were if you're at the MIT flea market and you see just this hopper full of like old 1990s Windows laptops and you find like this one like take the entire box for 10 bucks this is all like e-waste you will find this one you can get twenty thousand dollars for because it is a key <laughs> piece of diagnostic equipment for a half a million dollar supercar <laughs>